I say Orbiter has challenged himself to flying SSTOs? Then Von Kurmu, what do you think of Orbiter's chances of flying SSTOs? Five minutes later. It appears Orbiter has set himself a large challenge. Let's see if he will succeed. Hello, and yes, you've read right. This is going to be an SSTO to the South Pole of the Man, or thereabouts. Don't know if we're going to go directly to the South Pole, but anyway, if we can take off, and yes, we just did, gear in. Engineering an SSTO is not an easy feat, at least when you're starting it off. I've watched a couple of Matt Lone's videos and uh, Mark Thrim's videos to work out to do this. So first off you have to get about 10 kilometers thereabouts and then accelerate to over 400 meters per second and then you hit the magical number of the rapier engines where they just keep on building and building up thrust and then what you want to do is try to stay in the atmosphere as long as possible just heading up slowly what you want to do is get as much thrust out of the atmosphere breathing engines as you can before you go to close cycle. The hardest part I found of designing this was working out how much rocket fuel do you need to make sure that you get into orbit. Now I do have nuclear engines on here to get into orbit, but the close cycle mode, the amount of fuel you need, is critical to make sure that you get your height your orbit tight enough in time otherwise you'll be ending up going back into the atmosphere and then losing your orbit which obviously i worked out the hard way so plonking fuel tanks onto here until it worked out seemed to be the best bet as they say trial and error that is the best way of working and flying anything in ksp trust me i'm an engineer <laughs> Anyhow, now that we are in orbit, we can set a course to the man, and obviously this is going to be a south pole landing, so we have to set up the orbit as what they call a polar orbit, so you're going over the north and south poles. This type of orbit, in fact, is quite useful, because what you can do with this, you go over every part of the planet as it rotates under you. That includes the moon or any other planet, as long as the planet rotates. And let's be honest, I think every planet rotates. And yes, that includes the moon, that may be tightly locked to the Earth, but that rotates so the one side always faces the Earth, and that's how that works. Otherwise we'd see the entire moon at different times of the year. So now we are getting into orbit around the man. The difficult part here, and I have no idea why I've got my gear out on here now, I'm not exactly landing this moment, but anyway, the difficult part is landing on the man is thrusting with nuclear engines because we haven't got much rocket fuel left in this thing and we need that trust me we'll, i'll show you why soon but anyway i'm rambling on we basically have to do a long thrust to reduce the amount of well speed velocity that's what i was trying to search for that took me three times to record i have no idea why anyway yes it takes a long time to reduce your thrust or your speed using the nuclear engines and here we are approaching. We've set a course close to a large crater on the southern pole of the man. Basically, I want to know if we can build a base in there. Is it worth doing it? Are we going to have difficulties? And if I want to do SSTOs and oh shit, we are going to hit the top of that mountain there. Excuse the profanities, but it was required at this point. With one obstacle avoided, uh, there's one more obstacle that we have to avoid, and that is the man at high speed. <laughs> but I think that is one of the problems if you have to land on the man, is that you're coming in at a shallow angle like we are here, and then you've got all these mountains that are appearing. So that's a minus point for the southern pole if we're going to use SSTOs, which will probably go and do rockets anyway and do a directed downward landing. It's because it's easier. Okay, so, alright, are we gonna do this? Obviously, I know because I've done this, and this is my first landing with an SST on the man, so. Uh, fingers crossed, and. Hey, presto! Ah, uh, <laughs> nothing exploded, which was what I was afraid of. Now, I've seen Matt Lone do his landings multiple times on the man, but I'm always afraid if I do that, let the landing leg on the front hit the ground, it'll explode. Anyway, let's reveal the mission we have. 
Yes, you've probably guessed it. This is a VTOL. And it's there. It's going to house two Kerbals. We have Jebediah and, <laughs> obviously, New Das. <laughs> Who's going to pilot this craft? Get your new ass in that seat. Ah, oh, I had to. I just had to. Sorry. Right, as our intrepid explorers are setting up their uh, VTOL for flight, let's ask you questions on well, missions to the man. Basically, SSTOs. If ever you've done SSTO missions, I would just like to know this all. And have they been successful, or have you failed miserably? And perhaps... You want me to do more tutorials on building bases on the man or landing on the man? I'm not entirely sure. I haven't done many tutorials lately, which is perhaps what I should be doing. So do let me know if you want me to do tutorials or update old tutorials. I don't know. Just let me know. Anyway, now that we've set up our craft, let's go exploring. The highest peak that we could find was this mountain and we'll call it Bottom Mountain because it's on the bottom of the moon. If that makes sense. Because there's no bottom to them. Oh, come on, Mark. You're supposed to be an engineer. Gravity makes a gravity well, which makes things round. It's not exactly flat. Although I suppose if the moon was flat, um, then this would be the bottom of the moon. Flat earthers. Who's right, who's wrong? <laughs> but as you can see, that crater is possible that we could build bases there is some flat areas but most of it is quite curved what if we do a central mining base and then we put bases like this on the mountain okay so here's the idea i'm proposing what we could do is set up a base in the middle of the crater where we'd be mining the ore and they would have areas outside on the rim of the crater on the highest points that we can launch up into orbit. I can use my mountain climbing rover that I designed in, was it several episodes ago? I can't remember, a couple of months ago. Last year or sometime. Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> but I can use that to, to transport the ore up the side of the mountains and into the crafts that will be sending them up to the orbit, to the space station, and wherever else we need to send it. So do let me know. Also, perhaps you want me to continue with this SSTO endeavor, and perhaps you want me to include more of the build and how to go about it so that you guys can join in on the quest and perhaps learn how to do your own and make sure that you don't run out of fuel on your VTOLs. <laughs> New Das tried to jump out to the last moment. Didn't succeed. But luckily the, the gravity on the man is not so bad that you can survive such a fall. Anyway, let's take a picture of the accident and have a look at this accident. Now, how the hell did this happen? I'm assuming a glitch. The terrain somehow is clipping the vessel somehow and then once it loaded back in, as the Kerbals got closer, it just flipped out. The problem is it's crashed the solar panels and there's no um, nuclear uh, power generators, whatever you call them. So yes, by here, I cheat and use Vessel Mover. Okay, I'm not going to fully cheat. I'm not going to re-add these solar panels or recharge it using Hyper Edit. No, I'm going to use this as another challenge for my SSTO program. Anyway, let's get the Kerbals inside. First off, let's get Jebediah, because he wants to be in the pilot seat. And then, uh, let's get your new DAS inside. Ah, <laughs> oh, the joke never ends. Now probably the second hardest part, and one reason why I should add RCS to these is because we've got nuclear engines to take off, I'm going to use the rockets as well, the gimbling of the rockets, so that we can actually gimbal ourselves, no, don't, 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 don't crash, don't crash, oh, we survived and we ran out of rocket fuel as well. And that is why I kept the extra rocket fuel on this craft, was because the nerve engines, they don't have any gimbling, so that means you've got no control. All I've got is the cockpit on the front, because we're in a vacuum. The ailerons on the rear of the spacecraft, or the SSTO, don't work. And I forgot to add uh, workable canards on there, so we can <laughs> steer the thing properly. 
which might add some problems on re-entry. We shall see. Anyway, it takes a couple of minutes to burn to get into orbit, because nuclear engines are really slow. I don't know how Matt Lone challenges himself to doing these missions with these huge long burns. Although I might have to attempt it if I'm gonna do it SSTOs. So question to you guys. If you build an SSTO with a single stage to orbit, are you allowed to stage it after you get into orbit? Is that cheating or not? I'd like to know, let me know. Anyway, getting back to Kirby is quite easy. As you can see, I've set my orbit so we head in front of the man, and then we can use that as gravity breaking. If we do the burn there, that'll reduce our relative speed to Kerbin, as you can see we slingshot out there. Perhaps I should do a video a bit on orbital mechanics and show you how it works rather than telling you because it's a bit hard to talk about. It's much easier to actually show you. Okay, so a tip from Matt Lone and that is set your periapsis for return from the man at about 50 kilometers. That way you're not going through the thickest part of the atmosphere and you're not going to explode. And then all you have to do is go around curbing a couple of times until you're heading back into the atmosphere. But what you can do, you can reduce your orbit using this aero braking method and then get back into orbit and return to the space center. Now forgive me if I don't do this on this episode because I am terrible at doing that with rockets, never main space planes. I will give it a go in the future. But at this point, I just want to make sure that this space plane can return to Kerbin. As you can see, it's out of control. But can we go do a controlled landing? This is going to be the biggest challenge for me, other than landing on the man and all that. I think this will be the biggest part. The reason why I do not use space planes. Control aerodynamics. Who needs that when you can thrust your way through it with a cylindrical rocket? And yes, we flip out. And we go ahead backwards. Okay, so the center of mass here is not in the proper place in relation to the center of lift. If it was, we'd be heading forward. And because of that, I can't control it. So I'm gonna have to think about this in the future. And the problem with this, you add a lot of fuel to get into orbit and then return is much much harder because you run out of fuel so here I am trying to switch on the engines trying to get control trying to get with the spin I think in hindsight is it I don't know it might be that I'm you because we're spinning or trying to get rid of the spin we're actually spinning faster is that right I could be wrong in any case, we were unable to reduce our spin, we were unable to regain control of the aircraft, so the only thing we can do is EVA. Come on, Jebediah. But Jebediah dies being hit by the cockpit. However, your new DAS survives. Look, he's hot. He's hot stuff. How does that happen? Shouldn't there be insulation inside the craft? New Das goes off exploring the debris, seeing if he can get this thing to fly. Yeah, we get some weird physics glitch in this game. Okay, so guys, let me know what my next challenge with the SSTO should be. Nothing too big, something sort of like working up in the next step for after doing the man mission. Now let's hide your new Das away. We can still see a silhouette. <laughs> that was awesome. And I'll say. Thank you for watching, I'm Orbiter. Trust me, I'm an engineer. And I'll see you in the next video.